Hello and welcome again to another podcast of the Gospel Rescue Mission. Today we're going to talk about roadblocks to re-entry at the Gospel Rescue Mission. And really what we're looking to do is answer the question, why can't I be allowed back into the mission? Uh, it's a question that we get often from former residents. Uh, it's a question that comes to not just myself, but to uh, a lot of our staff members. And we're going to try and answer some of that. Um, first, I want to point out that the question assumes or implies that we have a history together. And the answer will always be relative to whatever that history is. So if the question is personal, why can't I uh, enter back into the Gospel Rescue Mission? Then the truth is you already have enough information for you to put some thought into these things. If you're asking on behalf of someone else, I may not be able to give you specifics because those details might just not might be appropriate for sharing with a third party. We have no interest in sharing details that might reflect poorly on another person's character. And if our history ha- contains some inappropriate details or or details that are uh, would would not fare well on that person for public consumption. We just don't let everybody know. Uh, What we can share is some of the principles that guide our decisions regarding readmittance into our program. So here are a few. One, if there has only been one previous stay with the mission, then a person is likely to be given given a date and a time in which they may reapply. If there's no violence, if there was no threats of violence, theft of mission property or resident property, uh, drug sales or distribution, then they're likely to be reconsidered at the time of reapplication. We really believe in second chances here, and we give them out often. Two, if our history together includes actions or threats to do harm, physically or otherwise, to the safety or well-being of our residents, our volunteers, our staff, or to the mission itself, the answer will nearly always be no. Predatory behavior, uh, racism, physical violence or threats of violence, things like, oh, if I see you out on the street, I'm going to punch you or you're a dead man. Uh, threats of lawsuits, threats of retaliation in the media, etc. All these things will likely result in a permanent end to our willingness to risk a person's stay inside our facility. We simply don't want to open ourselves up to that kind of threats, to those kinds of threats again. Now, number three, when a person has been in our program multiple times and our history together has become what we would consider too repetitive, uh, when a person repeatedly fails out of the program for choosing to drink or use drugs while they're a resident, Um, maybe repeatedly becoming combative or argumentative with staff or fellow residents during their successive stays, when they regularly refuse to accomplish required tasks assigned by staff, maybe conforming to dress code or hygiene code, refusing to look for work, refusing to manage their finances, etc. When destructive patterns have been established with us, we simply look for some indicator that this person recognizes their mistake and has made a strong attempt independently to break that pattern before we'll be open to working together again. This may include things like completing of a residential inpatient drug and alcohol treatment program with the advocacy of the program, uh, maybe a six-month verifiable sobriety uh, enrollment in substantial counseling programs, etc., things like that. In other words, give us something other than your word that might cause us to hope that this time will be different than the last. When we see that, then we can look at another opportunity. See, repeated failures begin to establish negative patterns that can cause a person to lose hope and uh, their determination to continue even trying. So when our programs begin to show signs of being repeatedly ineffective, we often suggest that a person just try something different that might be more suited to their personality or their needs. These decisions are never made with only the applicant in mind. 
Each one is asking to be invited into the living quarters of uh, 45, 50 men, uh, 30 women, 25 children, things of that nature. So most of whom of, of the resident population, they're hardworking, they're working to get their lives right and can only do so in a safe environment. The safety of those who are proving their willingness to follow the program will always take priority over the needs of those who've already proven a willingness to break the written commitments that they've made to the mission in the past. Each successive opportunity will come with further requirements for evidence of a willingness and an ability to change. So what we're looking for is a person's increased commitment each time to not repeat the same mistakes of the past, the same thing that they did last time when they were here and left for whatever reason uh, that that was. So keep in mind, we're talking about now only those people who have on multiple occasions been through the Gospel Rescue Mission residency program. This being the case, we now have a track record of a measurable history and a relationship from which to base our decisions on. So now you know that those are the things that we consider before deciding to let a former resident re-enter into our program. I hope that helps. And if you're one of those people that, that would ask, why can't I get back in? I hope that gives you some insight as to what our decisions are, where we are with you. And we certainly hope, well, good things for you. We certainly hope that, uh, that you will get into a place where real genuine change happens in your life. The question for us is, are we going to be one of those components in making that change happen in the future? And the proof of, of us being a requirement in that process really now becomes yours to carry. You have to, you have to show us why you're, you're worth another shot. And that would be uh, only another shot for those who really, it would only come into question when there's been multiple, multiple times of a person staying here and failing out, staying here and even leaving, but then going out and failing again in the same repetitive way. So I hope that's helpful. And uh, that is another podcast here for the Gospel Rescue Mission. I would encourage you to uh, check us out on our website at uh, grantspassmission.org. Uh, check us out on our Facebook page and feel free to uh, comment, write, send in, send in mails, letters. We'd love your support. If you can donate to the Gospel Rescue Mission, and we'd love that. Uh, again, uh, we are located at 540 Southwest Foundry in Grants Pass, Oregon, uh, P.O. Box 190, uh, Grants Pass, Oregon. Um, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Again, thank you so much for listening and have a great day.